So excited to be here today. Have a new individual. Always great to have new individuals here. Uh, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a future. And uh, this is the Hour of Empower. This is on the live stream network. Our word of the day is gratification. So mm -hmm. we'll always try to center back uh, when we get off or when we don't have somebody's comment who we'd like to address. Chat's wide open. We depend on you to stay relevant. We want to give you as many quality takeaways as we can. So share with us what you'd like to know or share with us what you think we want to know from what you've learned this week or, or since yesterday. Uh, and with that, I want to uh, share that um, or introduce Kimberly Lechnick. And uh, she has quite a, uh, oh, uh, amount of experience. I know she's worked with Leslie in the past, so knows some of our group and is connected with a few of you. Uh, and this is a great opportunity to network, make connections, get to know people better after the show. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kimberly. Kimberly, please uh, share a little bit about yourself for context for everybody out there. Looks like Leslie's already here and saying hi to you. Great, Leslie. Leslie's on Saturdays, and if you don't know Leslie, you will if you hang around LinkedIn because she's got the hour of, uh, I mean, she's got mind, uh, mind Over Matter on Mondays and also Think and Grow Rich on Fridays. She's here on Saturdays. She supports a lot of people with her calendar of events. Thank you, Leslie. Carl's here. Carl's just great. He's in the new collaboration group, which will meet in about two and a half hours. And Carl just uh, started a newsletter because of the group. And uh, feel free to uh, subscribe. Reach mm -hmm. out to Carl, great guy. He's into uh, finance and capital here in uh, Colorado. So mm -hmm. welcome, Carl. So now, without further ado, let's go to back to Kimberly. And Kimberly, introduce a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much, John, um, and, and thanks so much for the invitation um, to come on your platform. I just want to share appreciation um, to you. And hi to everyone. Hi, Carl. It's so great to see you. And Leslie, of course. Um, my name is Kimberly Lechnick, and uh, you may know me and connect me um, through the power of the moment. Um, I have a weekly audio space at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and as well, I have a community, a growing community, and my uh, collaborator and I, um, we work uh, side by side, building the community and really taking a deeper look at personal development, uh, uh, a deeper look. You know, I am a love coach um, and I support professional women uh, to embrace their self-worth so that they can rock their relationships. Our relationships are everything. Again, Don, thanks so much for having me here. Oh, you bet. So what's your initial thoughts on gratification? Oh, my goodness. I think we could dive in and peel back the layers so deep. Um, we could definitely do that. But I think in our world today, what comes up for me initially is uh, the instant gratification, not only for us as adults, um, but how instant gratification um, is taking um, taking over our minds, right? Um, can I share a quick, uh, a quick scenario? You bet. You know, I was standing in line and... Um, I was standing in line the other day and I turned around to look at this woman that was behind my son and I, and she was antsy. She was tapping her foot. It was a long line, you know, and I just noticed her, you know, anticipation, right? So as we're talking about instant gratification, um, I looked at her and I said, well, you know, aren't we so grateful? Aren't we so grateful that this gentleman is willing to gift us his time today. Um, and I think patience goes a long way. And I think she kind of had a strange look on her face, 
But then she also did remind herself that patience was very important. But I think that illustrates um, when it comes to gratification, instant gratification, um, what what is really happening with us as a, as a collective. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And, and your um, ability to identify patience in relationship to gratification, because sometimes you need to be patient for something to find its own time and place to arrive to you, mm -hmm. right? So if you know if you want to get rewarded, sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes you have to wait longer than you expected. But that's what it is for resolution, which I think is gratification something that's really been resolved and satisfied and hopefully enjoyed. And that's possibly where the gratification comes in. But let me uh, bring Leslie's here. Carl, we talked about, great person. Charles from Hong Kong, who's now in Saskatoon, visiting family for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charles will be on uh, New Year's Eve day and New Year's day. And he suggested beginnings. And I always give Charles credit for coming up with the word of the day, which happened, I don't know, about seven months ago from Charles. So, you know, things that everybody shares, everybody can benefit from. Leslie comes back with power of the moment. Absolutely. And what what um, motivated you, Kimberly, to move in your direction that you're moving in? You know, when I reflect on my journey as human, uh, one of the things that comes up is personal development, is growth. And I've been through a fire or two. Mm -hmm. And so because I've been through a fire or two, I think it's important, you know, um, to take our pain and repurpose it. Right. That's why we're here. We're here to be servants. And so what better way to be a servant than to to come on and um, talk about the hard things and create safe spaces for other humans mm -hmm. so that they can come through the fire, too? Yeah, well, I think the more you can involve more the less of you there needs to be to make yourself happy, you mm -hmm. know? So when you can get involved with something bigger in yourself or something that takes your mind off of yourself and puts it on something of value, something of appreciation, now you're building uh, self-esteem, right? Because you're showing you have something to give and something you have to give is something people want to get. So I think that's really finding alignment in your gifts and your audience who could take advantage of those gifts. And the key then, in my opinion, is communication, mm -hmm. right? If everybody's as smart as they're gonna be and everybody's doing the best they can be, when they finally decide on their finished or, or, or present product or service, how do they get the word out? Mm -hmm. And how effective is that? And then how does it affect the service or product you create, right? Because if you're not bringing in cash flow, if you're not making money, it's hard to invest. It's hard to go long term. It's hard not to sell yourself time for money that may not even serve the purpose that you're on and might distract you. So you know, it's all of that strategic stuff that people have to look at versus just do, doing things and hoping as you do more things, something comes together and it will. But do you want to do it by accident or by plan? Do you want to be able to track? Do you want to be able to measure? Uh, Dave is here. Great to see you, Dave. Uh, Dave is uh, on every other Wednesday. He's in the collaboration group also. Just a wonderful gentleman, 26 years in the Navy, and now he's helping other vets uh, transition from the military to civilian life and doing a great job. So great to see you, Dave. And, you know, this is really a show for people who want to do something. 
Mm-hmm. It's nice to talk about it. It's nice to get excited and be friendly. But who's going to work every day or every week? And if no one's going to work, you got to give room for the people who are on their way to work. Right. And I think that's key is being authentic, being true to yourself, your your uh, vision and your integrity, because mm-hmm. this is a, a platform where you never really get to be in the same room with someone physically. Right. So and it's so easy to leave a screen versus a room or a location. So you have to work even harder to build that trust, support that trust, and then give opportunities that rely on that trust to take everybody to a higher level or at least learn at a higher level. You know, just to know something exists is worth knowing, whether you ever apply it or want to use it, but it just opens your mind, plus it expands your vision and it shows you you don't know everything yet. Mm-hmm. If this was something you didn't know, there's probably another thing you didn't know or something you're doing now that you could be doing better. But anyways, getting knowledge share, getting feedback is so inexpensive, risk free versus doing it all yourself, learning firsthand. It's, it's very sensitive at that level. So with all this said, Kimberly, what does this make you think about? Oh, you know, it makes me think about growth, you know, and the importance of it, you know, every day waking up knowing, like you said, that you know something, right? But do you really know it? Are there other layers to it? Can we peel it back some more? Can we go deeper? And I think that well, when we're here on this physical plane and earth, right, you know, um, because we're here, we know there's more to learn, right? The learning just never stops. It just never, ever stops. And for me, I'm a proponent of making it fun and really tapping into your creativity, right? Okay. Because yes, these are things that we need to learn, right? You know, that's why we're here. We need to learn. Um, And so why not make it fun? Why not enjoy it? Why not show up um, being fully present and, and coming from a place of joy? Why not? You know, why not? I, I, I think that's really, really important. And when you were talking about communication, that's a perfect topic. It's a perfect topic. Are we communicating? Do we really know what communication is? How can we be a better communicator? The layers are endless. Yeah, absolutely. And why not be seen in the best form possible? Why not take the fastest, most efficient vehicle available? And why not hear your true voice and share your true voice and who you are, uh, you know, And why don't people like Kimberly just said, and usually it's because they're following what they've just been doing, right? They're they're into a pattern, they're into a cycle, they're into a trend, and they're into a a comfort level because they're so used to doing it. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do, even though it could be less uh, enjoyable to do. And most of the time it's because someone has to do it themselves. But if you have someone who says, hey, where you're missing, I'll I'll fill in Mm -hmm. or, hey, I'll take you there if you don't know how to get there, then things happen a lot faster and the excuses go away. Right. Because, you know, it's like, well, I don't have a car, so I'm out of luck. Well, you're not the only one who does. You know, there are people with cars. There are ways. And I think if you realize there's if there's a will, there's a way. You know, and I think just knowing that knows there's hope, there's possibility. And what you don't know, maybe someone does. Leslie comes back with, we already know how to make it fun. We simply forgotten. It's time to go back to when we were kids and used our creative imagination. You know, I think not only have we forgotten how to have fun, we've lost the people who we used to have fun with when we were having fun. Right? 
there was the playground. It was your best friends. It was the people you couldn't wait to see every day. And they grew up and moved away. Some people lived and then passed on. But you can now create that fun group, that play group with everybody in front of you. Somehow everybody on the screen chose this hour to leverage this hour for benefit and contribution. And I think this puts people in a different cycle than they're used to, opens up a new trend, and then invites people on a daily basis to show up and bring value or be grateful for the value someone's receiving. Uh, here is another one from Charles. I think the first step is awareness. Mm -hmm. Cultivate self-awareness of desires and impulses. Allow yourself to pause and consider the potential long-term consequences before acting on them. Yeah, you know, and I think there's not enough self-reflection. There's not enough review. Everybody's so busy doing, they want to keep doing. They got more to do, and they're already on the trail versus, hey, take a, take a five, 10 minute break or an hour or a day. Put it all on the table, see where what it looks like now. See what the puzzle is, has developed into and what the vision of it looks like because there's time to change change, right? You can always adjust if you think it's worthwhile and you should. Beverly's here. Beverly's our Tuesday person. Uh, great to see you. Aloha. Must have had something Hawaiian today going on. Dave, Leslie, Charles, Carl, and so many more. You know, and I think when you look at gratification, it's really in spirit that one gets the most rewarding value, right? Where someone, something really touches you, not just makes you feel something, but really integrates inside of you. Or you trade one belief for a much better belief or one strategy for a much better one. And then everything looks better because, hey, I got more horsepower, I got more know-how, and I've got support. And I think everybody is more courageous when they're with an army behind them and with them. And I think that's another thing that we can configure to our uh, where we want to be with who we want to be with. Uh, Beverly says, I'm hearing you. I'm having my fun time just being here. Morning break. Well, great. You know, and, and you know, they always say, if you want to get something done right, give it to a busy person. You know, and so many people here are multitasking, doing so many things, keeping a really quality schedule, but maintaining a really quality lifestyle and personality. You know, you don't feel sorry for a busy person when they're having fun, when they're laughing and enjoying everything, because they're not working at that point. You know, most people need to work harder at play than they do at work. Mm. They sacrifice their play for work and lose both ways. So, you know, what's your thoughts on, we're still in gratification, but really I think what we're touching on is balance. So how do you promote balance within you and within your practice? And, and who do you have a practice for? You know, for me, Don, when I, I'm still thinking about some of the shares, so I don't know if there's time for that. And then I'm thinking about gratification too, because again, you know, there's layers to it. There's layers to it. You know, um, again, we're talking about, there's so much to learn for me. I I'm not a proponent of balance, right? You know, harmony, maybe, you know, like harmony within the self, um, yes, yes, but balance, eh, I don't know. Why, why is that? What is balance that doesn't balance? I think that it's distracting. Trying, I think it's trying to figure if you're up or down on certain things or where you're at. Yeah, I think it, it can, you know, and again, everyone has a different perspective and, and this is a, a real great, um, great topic. But for me, it's more about harmony within yourself. You know, are you feeling harmonious? Does it work for you? 
right? I think mm -hmm. that's the better question to ask. Does it work for you? Not going outside yourself, you know, um, and saying, you know, like, all right, you know, am I balanced, right? No, like, are you feeling with what what is happening in your world right now? And what you have on your plate? Are you feeling harmonious? Are you at peace? right? Are you at peace? And if you are, great. You know, because for me, it's important for us to want to move forward and, and, and stay in action, stay in action. And I think some of these topics like balance for me, again, it's my perspective and everyone has their own unique um, perspective. But for me, it's, it's about wanting to stay in motion, right? Because we're all here for a unique assignment you know, for a reason, for a purpose. And it's important for me to know that everyone is, is moving and in, in motion and in action and not being, uh, you know, kind of caught up, you know, in, okay, now I need to measure myself in this respect and my imbalance. Cause you, your mind can kind of get all, tangled up. I don't know. For me, it's like flow. If I want to be in flow and be hard, you know, I, I'm talking about harmony. I'm talking about uh, flow. I'm talking about being in motion and being in action. And I, I love what uh, Leslie just said, balance according to those algorithm of balance, someone else's or your own. Yeah. I love it. I but love don't, it. Don't you think that that's one of the key elements is semantics because to some people balance and harmony are the same thing now, now again to some people so yeah. I think that's the key just like leslie's a uh, comment someone else's or your own yeah right you could say balance and some people would say hey that's exactly where i want to be and sometimes yeah. if you dig a little bit lower you know when you're not getting enough sleep and you need to right? You know, you, when you're not eating well, and you should, and you know, that's taking you out of your harmony or balance, right? If I had more sleep, I'd feel more energy if I exercise more. I mean, so you're always seeing where you are because of what's happening to you, mm -hmm. right? If something made you stay up all night, well, that's got nothing to do with you, but it affects you because you didn't get to sleep. If you're out to go get groceries and you're now eating stuff you really aren't excited by. It, again, I think that's a, a context everybody should really figure is how are my words being interpreted by other people's words and their words. And I think that's where patience comes in to see how that really is being given. What did you mean by what you just said? Right. I don't, I mean, things of that nature, but here's Linda. Linda's always a great supporter of our show. Uh, I am trying to join, but not getting signal to join in yet. Uh, well, thank you for being here and being on the screen, Linda. You've been with the show forever and have contributed so much. So always appreciate seeing you and hope your signal only gets better. Uh, so, uh, with what we're talking about gratification, it seems like um, so many people may have a false illusion of what is gratifying, right? So in other words, that big house, when you get it, now is a big cost and responsibility, right? That expensive car, now you got to insure it, you got to have a, a space for it, you know? So what are you seeing in this materialistic Madison Avenue world we live in uh, as to get to honest gratification or simple gratification where it won't take that long and won't take that many uh, dollars or years to get there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lo that's a loaded one, Don. That's loaded. Or you, can, or you no. can pick a question. Either way. Yeah, you know, for me, I keep going back to. I keep going back to the, our, our the reason why we're here, 
right? The reason why we're here. And then when we pair that with gratification, the definition of gratification, it changes, right? It changes from all of these things on the external to what's going on internal and at this growth, right? So for me, gratification may look like, wow, what did I learn today? What was that 1%? What did that 1% look like for me? Another human, based on their level of awareness, and I think Charles brought that to our conversation today, was awareness. Every one of us is exactly where we need to be in this level of awareness. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when we're talking about gratification, that also is going to, our perspective on gratification is going to change. As in that little scenario that I was speaking about where the woman was standing behind my son and I very impatiently, very, I want it now. I want to touch the phone. I want to click buy. I want to do this now. I want to have it now. So for me, I'm not going to say that I'm immune to that, right? Because again, you know, if we're on Amazon or anything else, you click the button, you get it. But being aware, like Charles brought to the conversation today, is really key too. Because when we're aware, we can make different choices. Great conversation, Don. <laughs> Well, what other shares do you see that we, we should spend a little more time talking about? Oh, my gosh. There were so incredible. There were so many. Um, there were so many. And I, I'm i not sure how I can scroll on Restream. Okay. Well, let me bring some up and tell me if these are. Uh, here's Leslie coming in with, so whose values and balance should we follow? Because everybody has a different balance. So if you want to touch briefly on some of these, so we can absolutely, absolutely. I love this, Leslie, because for me, it's yours. It's yours, because this is your experience. And based on who we are as individuals, and then how we come together as a collective, right? It's spaces like Don's, where he's bringing in different perspectives. And these different perspectives are helping us grow, us think about what our experience is in this moment. And do I want to shift my experience? It's up to us to determine that. No one else but us. Uh, us and how we see we would like to grow. That's that's what comes up for me, Don. Well, great. Let's move on to Charles's the more we feed our desire to have what we want, when we want it, the less we are cultivating adult characteristics within, in ourselves like patience and endurance. There is strength and wisdom that comes from hard-earned experiences and failures and cultivating deeper relationships to people, places, and things. Any thought to that? Oh my goodness. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. For me, Charles is is sharing with us that the more we click on the Amazon button, right, you know, so to speak, the more we're clicking for that instant gratification, we're losing out on what I like to call these invitations that were being extended all the time for growth. Charles has given us a, a major gem, a major gem today. Um, I mean, patience, endurance, these are, these are fantastic. Um, I don't know if I would call them characteristics, but they're fantastic. I mean, can you imagine holding patience in your hand and getting so curious about it, seeing how you can bring it into your life experience every day, you know, or endurance, you know, how can I 
create more endurance within me, right? How can I do that? Getting really curious and then coupling it with that childlike wonder that Leslie was talking about. You know, I don't know about you, Don, but I remember sitting or laying flat on the grass as a child, looking up at the clouds and just being with those clouds. And those clouds could be anything I desired them to be. That is what our life experience, right? And Charles brought it, brought it forward. Leslie brought it forward. Oh my God, I love it. Oh, well, that's so cool, you know, and it just shows what other people can do for other people without even knowing what they're going to be doing for them. But they know what they're sharing has value. Mm -hmm. And if everybody would prioritize the value of their sharing with the time they spend with people, you know, how much time is wasted on complaining, on, on, uh, you know, where you've been, what you're afraid of, everything else, when that's precious gift time, right? You wouldn't think twice about bringing some flowers or a, a cake or candy or whatever to turn somebody on. But then you open your present up with a bunch of stuff, Yeah. right? And it's almost like you had to pay them with your gift to put up, to have them put up with your challenge where the gift you give is a smile. Mm -hmm. is, is creating laughter. You don't got to get heavy. You don't got to get deep in a lot of things. You can be as simple as looking at a butterfly together, noticing something, yes. right? Experiencing that moment, not creating it, but joining it. And so I think there's a lot of positioning. And that's where I think gratification comes in, is knowing what you're about to bring is going to be gratifying. Right, that you actually put some thought and personalized whatever you're doing for someone. You ever go to offices and they got people from out of town coming in and they got that little board with their little white letters and they say, Welcome, Mr. Winston from ABC Company. And when you walk in, you see your name and your company. And it's gratifying. You know, it was purposeful to do that, but you also know it was thoughtful. Someone had to take some time. Someone had to direct themselves to put those new letters on, take the old ones off. But I think when you have a plan that you really believe in, it will give you the patience to, to do the plan. When you know, hey, this is just the first part. The mm -hmm. second part will accomplish this and the third. So you know expectations are sincere and honest is you won't get disappointed if you don't set yourself up for disappointment. Yes. Right? If you don't give credit before it's due or anticipate that everybody's going to do exactly what they need to do so it will happen, uh, which is not to undershoot either. It's just to go, like Kimberly said, with the flow. You know, if everything's warm and cozy, you get a little bit more comfortable and you get more involved. And, you know, you, you can feel the temperature of the energy in the room, the people. Carl says, sometimes instant gratification represents a fear that gratification will not occur in the future. What do you think, Kimberly? Oh, my goodness. You know what, Carl? That's <laughs> that's amazing because for me, 2024 is all about the year of abundance. And you're, you're at, you bring something to the table that we can absolutely get curious about and playful about. And, you know, I mean, probably have a whole new conversation on, Don, um, instant gratification and what do we think about it. Um, but I think it's interesting that you, you, you say, Carl, that it represents a fear that gratification will not occur in the future. And that's a great point. So if we are wanting to be abundant, right? If we are really truly drawing in abundance, attracting abundance, we are abundant beings. Um, then fear has a no place in that because we were created in pure love. So, I mean, and we know what the opposite of that is, is fear. Right. And and we want to be pure, be who, who we were created to be. And that's pure love. Yeah. And again, uh, when you look at fear, 
there is always going to be an element of it, depending on the situation you're in. <clears throat> and, and because it's like anything strange, anything new, anything different creates uh, suspicion, at least, or curiosity, <laughs> right? It's like, hey, I'm not used to this. What's going on? Right? Or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think how it impacts your thinking mm -hmm. and your action is the key. Mm -hmm. You know, you want a little caution. You want a little bit of skepticism to new things, but you don't want it to change your open-mindedness, mm -hmm. to experiment. And it makes it actually a little bit more exciting and energetic when you find out you had nothing to fear. So not I love it. You get the <laughs> but you didn't have you, you'll never fear that again because you know what it is, right? If you thought, hey, it, if I touch that snow, it's going to be too cold, and you find out it was refreshing. If, if you, you, <laughs> and you know, and that's, that's another thing. Well, you're in Chicago, <laughs> and you know, I used to, like I said, I grew up in Detroit, which is like Chicago's younger <laughs> cousin in a way. Same weather, same, you could almost switch street signs and you'd feel at home in both cities <laughs> because it's so diverse and ethnic and, and just people love food in both places. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is the fun of knowing you're only here for so long. Mm -hmm. You only have so much time. You know, if you had the benefit of all the time in the world, you know, you can make so many mistakes, you wouldn't have to worry because there's another day. But when you know your day is, anybody doesn't know what tomorrow brings. But if you know you have today, and mm. you can get gratified every day by, mm. you know, I love just focusing on what I'm eating. You know, I like my oatmeal to be so enjoyable. I get that that carries me through the day. Or I get to take a nice walk somewhere new that I haven't been. And you open up your horizons. Leslie comes back with our view changes with every new bit of information, doesn't it? Yes. I'll, and then we can come back to any you feel like addressing. Agreed down balance is a matter of semantics. We need love, work purpose, health aligned, then you're in a good place. And, and Beverly's a therapist and a coach and has got her podcast going and uh, is doing so many wonderful things and, and has made Tuesday really, really valuable here. So thank you again, Beverly. Uh, Charles, call us of the marshmallow test, contributed huge amounts to this topic. Not really familiar with marshmallow marshmallow test do you know anything about them kimberly i'm not familiar i'd love charles to educate us on that okay well if you want to do a little typing charles we'd love to you got our curiosity self-control and success charles caldwell says follow-up studies have suggested that children who demonstrated better self-control during the marshmallow test tended to have better long-term outcomes in various areas of life these outcomes include academic performance um, social skills and overall well-being. And Charles is one of the leaders of the largest uh, English-speaking schools in Hong Kong, mm. has 32,000 students, and has just an illustrious career. So always great to see Charles. Linda comes back with morning all, finally, gratification to get from a spinning to here, and bring great pleasure to be able to listen and join the comments and discussions. Thank you, Linda, because you know, everybody who's supporting it, promoting it, being positive about it makes it easier for everybody to continue to ride that wave of positive energy. You know, it's like when you're cooking for a group. If everybody loves it and can't tell you how great it is, it made it all worthwhile, right? Yeah. Because you felt, hey, it really did gratify people. Maybe that's one of the answers is you get gratified by providing gratification right? If you're the gratifier and, and you are very successful at it, then that's going to just make you feel like I want to do more of this, mm -hmm. right? If this is like, I can help these many people. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but if it is, well, here we go with the definition. 
The marshmallow test was a famous psychological experiment conducted by Walter Michel in the late 1960s and early 1970s. It involved offering young children a choice between a small immediate reward, such as a marshmallow, or a larger reward uh, that I'll read, uh, such, as, uh, uh, such as two marshmallows, mm. if they're willing to wait for a short period of time. The test aimed to measure the children's ability to delay, to delay gratification, explore the implications of self-control and delayed gratifications on long-term outcomes. Well, that explains it all. So someone gets more or even double by waiting longer. And maybe that also applies to trust. Maybe it's like, well, I know I got it here. Do I wait for two that may never come? Uh, and I think that's a question a lot of people ask about a lot of things they choose in life. The tests are often considered the foundation studies for modern views of self-regulation. So, Kimberly, you learned something about marshmallows today you would have never known. I love it. And I love, I'm a deep thinker, very knowledge-based. And I just absolutely love that, Charles. So I will be looking at that. Um, I've worked with, with children and families for quite some time. Um, and uh, that, that has piqued my interest. Um, and uh, the other thing that's coming up for me, Don, is this idea of faith, you know, right? It just popped into my mind, you know, um, because <laughs> whatever it means to each and every single one of us, um, you know, it, it, it does involve um, trust. It does involve um, again, whatever our higher power is, um, it does involve um, self-control and all the things that we've been talking about today. Yeah, and I also think you have to add a measure of reality to everything. And I think more people need to be realistic. You know, even in business, everything usually takes longer and costs more than you ever plan. And that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. At the same time, you also know you're going to meet people you never knew in the, in the coming year, and you're going to learn things you never knew in addition to what you started the year with. Mm -hmm. In some ways, you just need something to help you directionally at times where you're not looking for balance, but you find it through other people's ideas or support mm -hmm. to now level you where you want to be. Because I think everybody feels they're doing the best they can with what they're doing. Absolutely. Right. And in that way, they're balanced, even though from the outside or even some other elements may not uh, demonstrate that. But someone who comes along and says, hey, let me uh, fix that for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I see so your door's not uh, tight or whatever. Let me do something. Same thing as, hey, I see, you know, you haven't got out in a while. Let's go out tonight. Right. And you bring somebody some more balance to their life. You know, you see somebody's not having so much fun lately and you create a fun event for them. You know, so, you know, again, it's it's thinking a little bit ahead to say, how can I make this a little bit better than typical? Mm. You know, how do I make this a little special? And it's that little thing, that cupcake someone picked up on the way or something that they remembered you really like from your last conversation. And uh, when they were shopping in the last six months, they found it for you. So a lot of things don't take a lot of effort, don't take a lot of expense, but do take a little bit of uh, empathy, a little bit of sympathy. And in a way that's not, uh, you know, marginalizing, but in a way that's rewarding. So anyways, with that, uh, Charles comes back, I believe, with they were also longitudinal studies as part of it. They tracked individuals for decades. Uh, well, you know, I, I saw this one video and they showed babies. And like by, I don't know what it was, six or eight weeks, that was their personality. So the ones that were happy and, and comfortable turned out to be happy and the ones that were scared or angry turned out to be that way. There was something to it, but you know, studies are studies and there's a lot more to it than just the results. Uh, so with that, Kimberly, without getting too academic, uh, 
you know, it looks like gratification has a lot of thought involved around it, a lot of discussion and a lot of different viewpoints. So how do we take what we're learning today and apply it to better use as time goes on? I just, you know, as we were kind of just chatting um, and learning, oh my gosh, <laughs> Charles has my academic brain wanting to go <laughs> look at some of these studies and, and go back to uh, academia for a little bit. Uh, but what comes up for me is just simply, what can we do practically? What we can do is we can um, find ways you know, we can use our awareness, as Charles brought to the conversation today. Um, we can use our awareness um, to really be alert, to be mindful um, as we are out and about. And we can see what are those small things that we can do um, to pour into people. The other thing that, and you're right, it doesn't cost anything, you know, um, there was this woman walked in the grocery store the other day and I could see that she had a cane. Well, I mean, just simply bringing a cart over to her meant like I just gave her a hundred bucks because she didn't have to walk over to grab the, the cart, you know, she could have, you know, cause she needed the cart to balance, you know, asking somebody how their day is, but also what can we do um, to develop more um, gratitude, you know, because that's what's coming up for me, is just having a gratitude practice every day. You know, um, there's so much around us, you know, and if can I share a quick story? Please. In my younger time or in my younger years, uh, when I was in college, um, I decided I wanted to become a speech pathologist. And I, as I was studying, I was just really, you know, like, wow, like, this is what I can do. Like, there, I learned through that experience in school, as well as serving um, children, um, birth to age 14, that something as simple as speech is not a given. We don't automatically get it. We don't automatically get uh, working body parts. We don't automatically just get um, the ability to walk. So I think developing a gratitude practice around just simple things, or they're not so simple, they're very complex, but around things that we take for granted, I think is the better way. Um, and then building from there, grateful for my eyesight, grateful for the ability to use my hands, to use my legs. You know, I, I just think a gratitude practice would be something actionable that we all can do moving into 2024. Yeah, I think that's a very, very valuable element to integrate. Uh, Charles comes back with advice as to you can start on YouTube to find the tests. They videoed many tests, cute to watch. Good for you, Charles. Thanks for sharing. Linda comes back with great discussion and information. I agree and interesting how child today with gratification of fingers would deal with or care about marshmallows today. Yes. That's, 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 that's something that's true. Charles Caldwell says, gratitude practice when frustrated, say yourself the correct answer is thank you and see what shows up. And I think that's a good uh, exercise for a lot of people. Harvey's here. Harvey does the franchise show on Tuesdays following this show. Sorry I'm late, had an internet outage. Pleasure to meet you, Kimberly, and hear the last part of the conversation. The conversation reminds me of our good friend Danny Warham, and Danny's a great guy out in England, too has been on the show and has been in the audience. His business is called Fergan. In Hebrew, this means the delight or pride uh, in the accomplishment of another person. I love that. So, so true. Bojana's here. I hope I pronounced your name properly. Agree. I have a gratitude journal uh, morning and evening for a few months now. I can say it's so effective and calming. Three to four cents are enough 
and everybody has time for that. You know, and you're, you know, you hit on a great point, Borjana. It, mm -hmm. It's taking the little bit of time when you don't have a lot of time, doing something simple and enjoying it for what it is. And I think Kimberly makes a good point and be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Be aware of who you're around and how you can better serve them. Like Charles says, with a thank you, with a good morning, hope it's a great day. You know, how long did that take? I don't think anybody's going to get offended. Some people may not respond or even might think you're a little intrusive, but it's not going to harm anything. And you'd be surprised how some people are waiting for a door to open so they can walk through it to you, right? Where, hey, I've, you know, you notice people all the time, you never say hello to them. You know, you pass them in the park, you pass them in the hall, you pass them at work. And, you know, doesn't someone say, hey, you know, I've been seeing you for the last six months. By the way, here's my name. Here's what I do. Great to meet you. I mean, it took 30 seconds and all of a sudden the mysteries are gone. Mm -hmm. The question is, what are you holding on to or what are you afraid to let go of by being the first to greet someone, present somebody with something? You know, how many times do you have a sandwich that's too big and you got a person who needs a sandwich, mm -hmm. right? You say, hey, why don't I just, you know, give half of this away before I start eating it? And, and I'm satisfying two people at the same time. Uh, but, uh, Linda comes back with being able to broaden thoughts and thought those of faith have seen how life as a journey may be a trial. Needing faith, not fear to help make journey go and, and grow moving forward. And back then, we're not getting a meal at touch of a machine, not going to hunt, uh, let me read it, um, kill skin, cut up all before, even before getting to enjoy. Gratification now can be easier path to get to. You know, you, you, you get accustomed to things. Uh, Linda finalizes that with glad, got to hear, Kimberly, welcome, I'm in central Illinois. Yeah, Linda knows everything about small small rural towns, spent her whole life there and has been a volunteer and supporter and raised her own family and has so many wonderful trials and tribulations she's been able to persevere and, 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 and be successful at. And I think if everybody treats everybody as an equal person, right, as a part of humanity. Yes. Right? It doesn't get into the judgment. I mean, can everybody so fast to, because they have to be, things are moving at the speed of light and people don't have the time to slow down like they used to. When I was growing up, everything was outside of your house if you wanted it. Not, yeah. Nothing came to you. Yeah. Right. If you wanted to go to the drugstore, you had a walk. If you wanted to go to a dance, you had to get a ride and show up. If, I mean, anything meant get out of the house and go get it. Now it's stay in the house and let it find you and come to you and you lose all the exploration. You know, the road to the drugstore took three streets that you'd pass neighbors and houses and it, it was bigger than going there for a candy bar or that was the purpose. So Kimberly looks like that got you motivated. Yes, you, you, you reminded me of uh and I'm not very good with the pronunciation of the Buddha's name, but he was talking about how just two hours on the computer disconnects our mind and body. And when you were talking, it just is a beautiful reminder. You just totally reminded me of that. Like just giving ourselves breaks, like mindful breaks throughout the day, right? just to reconnect our mind and our body. That's so important. You know, even getting outside and taking a walk when you were talking, I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> he must have watched the same video. <laughs> well, I've actually lived a video because I've done 10,000 steps for like 25 years every day. And my, my motto is if I'm not talking like I am, I'm walking. I'm not sitting. And then I got some most wonderful audible books. And I can't wait for the walk because I take that book with me. And I can't wait to hear what, what's happening next. Actually, I'm listening to 
really cool book called The Silent Warrior. Ooh. And, and uh, you know, and then I got really into The Go-Giver, which was Bob Berg's book. And Bob was here. Mm -hmm. And we've become pretty good friends since then and hope to have Bob back. And that's really the beauty of it is not only do you meet people, you get to know their work, mm -hmm. you know, their passions. And all of a sudden, it's like you, you sample it because you like the person. So maybe you like elements of what the person's been involved in. Mm -hmm. and I'd rather get to know less people in a deeper way than more people in a lesser way. Mm -hmm. Right? Because now you're reaching at a richer level. And you know that it's a it's an exchange. Everybody's ratcheting up together. The reason why the show gets better is the audience keeps getting better together. Everybody's mm -hmm. getting smarter together. If 20 people share with 20 people every day a little bit of something, over time the compounding effect effect is incredible, and the influence of association takes over. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're spending more and more time with certain people, they're going to have a bigger influence and the people you're spending less time with will have a lesser influence. Uh, Charles comes back with that's called habit bundling. Combine one habit walking with another habit that you like listening to audio books. And, you know, you're so right, Charles, because everything's competing for thought and time. So where do you turn to? Pleasure. Right. What makes you the happiest and you find out it's the healthiest. Mm -hmm. Too many people figure, oh, this is going to make me so happy, but it's going to cost so much or I'm going to risk so much, but it's so in energizing or what I'm going to do it. What if you did things that were so healthy mm -hmm. and so satisfying and made you so happy that when you do it, like, like Charles has qualified it, habit bundling where maybe one habit by itself wouldn't have been enough or peanut butter without jelly wouldn't have been enough. But when you combine them, now you get the full benefit and it just shows, hey, what else could I improve of enjoyment, right? And you know, that whole strategy of pay yourself first, get yourself as happy as you can as early as you can, then start making everybody else happier. Yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be a better strategy? So, so anyways, we're coming up on top of the hour. Looks like the hour flies by pretty quickly. And it was, it was meant to be a three-person show, but it worked out just as well as a two-person show. And I have to applaud you for jumping right in and naturally uh, acclimating to the thoughts, the uh, comments, and really the wonderful wishes because – if one can believe in things they can't see, which is usually the definition of faith, mm -hmm. one can feel the intention and the purpose of the people and the content and the comments back to us. And that's gratifying. So I think that comes full circle. So what's your thoughts on the show and gratification and the audience? Oh, my goodness. Well, I have to say, Don, again, thank you. I can't thank you enough for allowing me to, to come on your platform. And um, I really appreciate you. And I am really, I've really enjoyed um, the deep, again, being a deep thinker. I really enjoy this. I can't wait to go back into the comments and take a look at them and um, say hello and, and meet everyone because uh it, it's my jam. I mean, it's my jam to to grow 1% every single day. And if if it's more, that's even better. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, mutual on all of that. And I uh, want to thank you for, for, for getting to introduce yourself to this wonderful community. And it is a true community. And that's much different than a regular audience. You know, an audience goes to the next show, a community stays together and supports each other. And you know what's so wonderful is this all transpired over the last 10 months with just one little eight minute show that continued to continue and eventually started attracting people that wanted a home that was safe, a place they could share, 
And, you know, everybody gets so much benefit from the lessons and, and the experiences they, they went through when they can get the dividend of sharing with others and they can avoid it. Uh, Dennis is our rhymer, by the way. Your <laughs> Jan is your Jen. Uh, and, and Dennis is a great guy. You know, and I can always say with every one of these individuals, I could always put great, great lady, great gentleman, great professional, uh, because it means something. There is something to pride. There is something to doing the right thing the right way and having integrity. And those are scarce commodities mm -hmm. that if you can attract and also be a part of, will only help you. With that, we're one hour on the dot with 24 seconds extra. And uh, if you like, come back tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll have, let me see. <laughs> I, I get mixed up myself. Oh, Mary Gardner with Kelly. Mary Gardner is a brand new person. I was actually in a group, a weekly group with Mary for a year. Uh, she is one of the... Uh, high level bookers of speakers around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. It's worked with all kinds of people, a wonderful lady. I think a lot to be learned, just like today with Kimberly. And we just keep attracting so many beautiful, wonderful people that I can't wait for 2024 to see who else comes through the door. So with that, thank you again, or I'll be thankful.